What's up, buddy? Hi, Frank. How are you? Good. Juggling. You can, you can hear me okay? I hear you fine. Okay, cool. All right. I hear you fine. So what's going on, man? Doing, uh, well, actually getting ready to Wednesday. We're going to Colorado, see my daughter, uh, go to my business, see how that's doing, see my other daughter. Uh, I'll shoot a little bit, but kind of taking a break, both physically and mentally. I think I need it. Sure. I've been hitting, hitting it pretty hard. So I think it's kind of time. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, what's that? Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. 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 I'll take my bow and shoot for fun. Not that, you know, <laughs> not that it isn't fun, but uh, right. no, no, you know, training or anything to shoot to shoot. Good. Yeah. What, what, uh, what question did you have? All right. So training has been going pretty good and progress certainly is not linear um let's see so far i'm kind of look i'm kind of looking at my log um shooting 720s uh have done some high arrow stuff which i i think is really good so thanks for that um score wise i have broken 300 in the first half you know, a number of times. So feeling pretty good about that. Um, shot a 595 last uh, last weekend. Yeah. So feeling, you know, really good about that. Um, you know, clean clean up a few shots. I'm in the sixes real easy. Yeah. Had a good training week. Um, scored 36 Thursday, did a 302. Uh, took a little bit easy Friday. I was thinking Saturday, you know, Saturday I'll break six or be real close or have a really good, you know, session. Um, after four or five ends, you know, it just it just never really came together. Um, you know, consistency wise, group wise, score wise. Um, on that one, I shot a five fifty one, and a, a year ago I would have been ecstatic about that. I would just, yes. I would be in heaven. You know? How many, how many, you ramped up your volume, correct? Yeah. How long ago? Um, after we, after we talked, which was a few weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, so are you uh, two or three weeks out from ramping up volume right now? Mm, yeah. Okay. So that's a common, uh, I'm going to be letting people in to you know as they log in and whatever like i got jeff's joining i don't know who jeff is but we'll figure that out here in a second hopefully it's not like a spammer um but so understand high volume is wonderful however maggie used to hate this part of her training um so same for myself we would log into um we would log say say you log high volume two or three weeks out after about three weeks of high volume you will you can see a reverse course on scores and the reason being is because you're you're sort of beat down you don't get to um you're not shooting a hundred percent at a hundred percent because you're physically tired you're mentally tired you shot all those arrows and if you just keep shooting high volume you're just all you're you're gonna go, you're gonna see a reversal. And then that plays on your mental psyche a little bit. You're like, why am I not shooting well? Blah, blah, blah. You have to understand yep. that you haven't given yourself a break. Right. That's all that's the periodization side of like the training that right. I, when I coach someone, it's always meant it's I always tell them, like, listen, I can coach you all year long and we'll do training plans for each major tournament, but like you can't just shoot a shit ton of arrows all day, every day, and expect to continue to get better all the time. 
sooner or later you'll get to a point where you know you're shooting pretty consistent but if you're not accustomed to it you're not adjusted to it you'll see it de- you'll see a decline around three weeks out yeah okay you know what i mean right. jeff yep. i muted you just so you know just just for background noise purposes if you have a question you, you can log in then and, and chat uh or you can unmute and chat you should be able to unmute i think i turned that off yeah um so yeah, just understand like, you know, periodization is built over a four to five week period. High volume is meant for, you know, the first and second week um, specifically to help you out. And then, and you get, you build that volume and what happens you start in that volume and like two weeks in, you feel freaking amazing. And then you hit third week and things get like miserable. Cause you're like, man, like, I feel like I have the control, but, you know, you, you know, the aim isn't the steadiest. The, the, the release isn't right. as consistent. You're like, well, what am I doing? And then you get, like, frustrated with it. But then I'll tell you, if you take a week, cut arrows back for, like, one week and then come back in the next week and start to score, all of a sudden you're like, oh, okay, there it is. Yep, that's it. Because you're not, you're not physically um, – you're not physically distraught per se, I guess you could say you're not physically broken down. You've given yourself some recovery time. You've given your brain a chance to recover. And then all of a sudden what happens is is you, you, you'll see a spike then in your scores because you're motivated to shoot when you take that time off, like, okay, I'm ready to go. And there, so there's a, that's a little bit of a placebo to that, but that's okay. It's the placebo is a strong thing. And, um, and it's, it's really, Kurt, it's not really, it's not any different than, than bodybuilding, weightlifting, you break muscles down sure. to build them up. It's the same, you know, consider your archery, um, your, your, uh, archery skill as sort of a, of a, uh, a major muscle group. You break it down, you educate it, you make it fatigued, you do all this stuff, you teach it all this new stuff. And then all of a sudden take a little bit of a break. You have all that knowledge, all that, all that strength, and then you come right back. And so I, I don't know if that's the best analogy, but that's. No, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I, yeah, I wouldn't stress that. I wouldn't stress about that. You know, you dropped a little bit in your scores. You're not always going to shoot your best scores every time you shoot. That's mm-hmm. the other thing that that does too, is it kind of trains you like you need to, on those third or fourth week out, like if you're on a five week cycle and you're the third week, end of the third week, beginning of the fourth week, and you're not cutting volume, you know, you it learn you learn to shoot through the struggle. That's the other side of that, that that's beneficial mentally. Cause you okay. go into a tournament, you got to learn to shoot through that struggle. You, sometimes we're the bugs. Sometimes we're the windshield. Hopefully we're the windshield more times than not. Right. That does not always happen. Okay. And that was kind of, that was my, the question I was going to lead into. It's like after, you know, four or five ends, it's like, man, it's just, you know, it's not coming together. Should I shoot through it? Keep, keep going. Should I do something else? You gotta I mean, go, yeah. You got to go by feel on that one. I mean, if you're keeping score and the score is shit and it's not going in the right direction, then stop what you're doing and fix the problem. Is your aim crap? Fix the aim. Is your release crap? Fix the release. Is your bow arm crap? Fix the bow arm. You know, do a quick yeah. video. Make sure your alignment's right. Get your mind right. And then, and then, you know, maybe you can quick fix it and hop right back into it. Maybe you can't. And if you can't, maybe you had other stuff going on that day. Maybe, maybe, maybe you, you know, you had some other stressor going on in your life that you don't realize. Like that stuff really draws from our ability to perform at a high capacity and and it can be anything from worrying about retirement accounts paying bills death in a family sickly relative uh relationship issues um I feel like a I'm a counselor right now um it can be it like it can be any of that stuff your business you said you have a bit you have multiple businesses or one just one yeah. Well, so I'm, it could I'm, be your business. Like you're something, yeah. some, something that's sitting out there that's um, manifesting itself. And you know that that's on your brain. You're not going to be a hundred percent into your shot that day. If that's on your brain and people to right. take that for granted and you can, you know, you can, I'm, I'm, an, I'm not dig, 
dogging on someone, but you can blueprint whatever shot you want. But if you got other shit going on in your life that's not sorted, it's going to affect how you perform. Ask me how I know. Because being the figurehead of the Barrel Project and doing all the coaching and doing all that stuff has done nothing more than just ha- uh, add it as an added distraction for my own shooting for the last five years, six years. So, you know, trust me, I know, I get it. And I get how much it sucks. So, you know, the, you have to, when you're, when you're self coaching, you have to recognize what should I do right now? Should I drive forward and fix this on the spot as I'm going? Cause there's also, you know, and you have to go by the feel for that day. There's also some, there's some good learning experience in pushing through the suck and just keep continuing the score, finish the score. Cause that's what you set out to do that day, you know, mm-hmm. and maybe you cut it from 72 arrows to 36 arrows and then, and then you go and do drills to fix the crap. Um, or maybe you just take that day off. Hey, I shot 250 arrows over the last four days. I think I'm going to, I think, I think that's probably part of my problem. I'm going to go and I'm going to, I'm just going to take a break and that's okay too. You know, and that's, that's the difficulty in coaching being a self coach and coaching is convincing a shooter. It's okay for you to stop right now because we're not accomplishing anything good. Yeah. I'd rather yeah. see you and walk. Fr- yeah. And Friday and Friday, that was my, kind of comment it's like you know i'm just i'm tired and sun sunday was better um but you know yeah. I'd... okay all right good good hold on a second okay. let's more people in here um anything else kurt you know that's um that that was my biggest that was my biggest biggest thing good okay biggest good thing. well you weren't far off you were um, you know, you, you have to, like, when I coach people, when I talk to people, when I do, um, when I do like seminars that you were a part of and whatnot, like, man, I, I don't, I try to explain to people, like the goal is for you to be educated enough to know how to handle your shooting. My goal is never to coach the same person forever. I'd rather see that person be educated and get experience and be able to hand like, I know what I need to do. I'm going to fix it. Any coach out there that's like holding on to this notion that they have to be a person's coach or they, this person needs them is that's self-fulfillment. Uh, no coach, no coach should approach archery that way. Shooters need to get mm-hmm. to a point where they build a tolerance. They build a strength. They build a, um, an education and a knowledge base about this is how I, I'm going to handle things. If you have a question, you should be able to reach out to somebody and whatever, and, and take care of that. If it's a private lesson, take care of that person. But you know, the goal is always educate a shooter, stand on your own two feet, because when you're, even if you're in somebody's coach box in reality, when you're on that shooting line, whether it's the first end of 72 arrows or the last end or head to heads, you're by yourself, mm-hmm. you yeah. and the voice in your head. And what you're saying to yourself in your head is the number one most important thing happening right there and in that moment. Process, form, whatever, doesn't matter. If you have any negative thoughts going on in your head, if you have anything other than positive um, and um, driven motivation in your head, you're all, you've already lost. Mm-hmm. Right. You're not giving yourself a chance. So right and that's that happened during your practice but you were able to be like you know what you know where's the benefit my benefit walking away today because i've already done this amount of work or do i need to stay and suck it up and shoot through it the only person that has that answer is you Mm -hmm. okay all right good enough sounds good yeah i might i might like to hit you up for some send some form videos or something yeah um i'd like to get some feedback on that but i'll, I'll hit you up later yeah just look at our, i don't remember you're on patreon so we'll mm-hmm. look at your tier and see what's included with your tier and then we'll go from there okay okay because yeah. some of that's free on patreon some of that's got you know your subscription just comes off of what the the fee would be it's sure. that's the way i do yeah. it i don't i don't really do like andreas that just posted this morning um he was the last one that i've 
I have allowed to sign up for a full year of coaching and it's worked very well for him. He's, he is super, super internally driven. Um, but I don't, I don't really do that anymore because I, I just, it's, it takes a special person to really be driven enough to invest that money and stay involved. I've had mo- numerous people um, pay me to be coached for a year. And after three to six months, a lot of times people just fall off because they, they want, they want me, sorry about that background noise. That's, that's a, that's a, what you call it? Dispatch. It's not me though. But I'm going to move. I'm going to turn that off real quick. Um, Yeah. So, you know, you just, I don't, I don't really do that. I don't really do that much anymore. I'll do like one month programs. I'll do private lessons. I'll do form stuff online, but I don't, I don't do that, that other stuff. That's yeah. But anyway, that's outside the, outside of this situation. Just let me know and hit me up direct. Okay. Uh, anybody else? So Jeff was in here, Jeff, um, Joey, thanks for joining us. Morton. I saw you Morton quick hop on and then hop off. It looked like you were driving though. So that's okay. You guys have any questions, any comments, any, any, anything you want to talk about? I'm still here. You just turn my video off. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. You you have any questions or anything you want to talk about? Or are you just kind of just. No, I was driving. on my, I, w- I was on my way home and I got the email. So I just thought I'd log on to check out. Cool. All right. That's cool. Yeah, man. I, I don't do these too often, whether it's completely open to the entire bearable project subscribers. Um, I do them quite often for just the Patreon subscribers and, and get into details with them. But when I have the time and, and um, I try to, you know, offer just, just talk about bearable what's going on and catch up with people. Yeah. But, yeah, when you usually do this, it's the middle of the night for me. So I'm trying to just yeah get get on those I can get on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where you're uh, where are you at? Netherlands, right? A little north of or, Netherlands, Nor yeah. Norway. Norway, Norway. I knew it began with an N. I couldn't remember Morton. I apologize. <laughs> That's quite yeah, all right. So I've coached Morton a little bit. <laughs> We did some we did some coaching with Morton. He stuck with it. Um, had some really good success early on, um, you know. And then life gets in the way and stuff like that. So, but yeah, Morton, I, Morton, are you? Uh, what what season are you? Are you guys in indoor season right now over there? Indoor season has right. just started. Just started. Okay. L- literally just started. Yeah, you're a little bit ahead the- of us. I remember that now. The the first uh, the first uh, I believe the first eighteen meter tournament was yesterday. Oh, yeah. Did you shoot? No, it was oh. a little too far off for me. Um, right. And uh, it, it's problematic sometimes when I have the kids and need some babysitters and stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, totally good. I want I wanted to go, but it's not always possible. <laughs> yeah, and uh, but it starts now because uh, right now it's starting to get dark very quick. Like, yeah, I live in the south, which has the most light, and here it's dark at eight o'clock now. Oh yeah, yeah. We're our weather's just changing here on the east coast, but yeah, the outdoor stuff is pretty much come to a close but here it's hunting is big so i'd say october november is really dedicated toward hunting we had a 25 meter that popped up on on our whatever our registration link for usa archery uh locally but indoor i think lancaster puts on like an october indoor and they have one like every month after that but you know, indoor doesn't really kick off until closer to December around here. Like legitimately, you see them more and more popping up and stuff like that. So we'll see some in October, but uh, I'm sorry, we'll see a couple in October and a couple in November. But yeah, I'm looking forward to indoor season this year. Finally, it's good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 
but yeah, man, thanks for logging in. I appreciate it. It was good talking to you. Um, yeah. I don't know if anybody else is still here. I saw Elizabeth pop in. Um, let me see here. Joey, I got your message and I will, um, I'll let you know. I have not actually, but I will send that message today. Um, Elizabeth commented, I'm actually wrapping up outdoor right now. Do you have any recommendations for getting ready for indoor? Um, yeah, make sure you're point on Elizabeth. Make sure you're point on. Point on as small as small of a crawl as possible, um, which doesn't typically happen in indoor. So if you can keep it like, if you can keep your crawl somewhere around a half target, a target crawl for me for indoor is around half of a Yoast tab, if that makes sense. So that's my, that's my theory. I'm not a fan of low poundage. 23 series arrows, 9.33 millimeter arrows. Stay away from the bat, the big fat arrows. They don't do you any good. They're, they don't provide you with any extra points, in my opinion. I, I really don't think they do. Unless you are someone who is shooting super, super consistent because the fat arrows just uh, magnify your errors. So if you are have inconsistencies with your shot process, you know, a like I shoot the uh match grade Easton, um, I think they're a I want to say a 6.5 millimeter arrow. Um that arrow versus a 23 or whatever. Uh uh say a, a mini collapse on that arrow is an eight mini collapse on a um, a 9.33 is six or seven. So, you know, for indoor and, and just get, if I could give people like indoors, a struggle, it's a tough, tough game to play because there's no environmental conditions that are going to affect it. It's literally just you and the target. And I truly think that people focus so much time on tune and not that tune's not important, but like if you're not keeping your arrows in the target, you're and what you're you're worried about tune, that's an issue. Um, you know, just focus on working on your weaknesses. There's plenty of information on the Variable Project YouTube page. If you know, if you, you know, can't search what your weakness is or what your struggle is or whatever then reach out to me and I'll answer the question for you. And then we'll, or we'll send you the, the right information, but work on your weaknesses. People focus on, if you're not able to aim, you're not allowed, able to keep your aim. Um, then work on your aim. If your release is, is not good. Work on your release. If your release is not good because of target panic and we, you know, we pluck, we're like, Oh, I plucked. No, you didn't pluck. That's target panic. You got to the middle Whatever it is triggered your shot. You tried to hold on to it. You couldn't hold on to it and you plucked. Work on your weaknesses. That's 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 really the name of the game. Get a consistent tune. Um, that's general. Make sure you're keeping your arrows at least within, let's say, the six ring. And that, that way you're giving yourself a fair shot to understand, you know, hey, I'm trending left, I'm trending right. You can figure that out. If you're still spraying them all over the target, it's going to be super, super hard to, to really get a, a tune ready um, early on. Like I'll tell you what Grayson does. Same thing I do. Um, like early on, I'll start at 10 yards and just focus on really consistent shots, really bang in the middle. You can do that 30 extra. Let's there's a, there's a video out there on, on our page on the YouTube page about it. And you can just shoot a three spot at five yards, three yards. Just start there. The amount, the amount of consistency. I'm not, I'm not sure who that is. I might have, I might mute you. That might be uh, Morton. Yeah, it is Morton. Morton, I'm going to mute you just so you know, buddy. Oh, you already did. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. If, if um, prime example, so many people get caught up on, I don't want to shoot 18 meters. I don't shoot 18 meters. I get caught up on that because 
I just want to jump in the shooting 80 meters. All of us would benefit from standing at three yards, shooting at a, um, a three spot and just hammering the X. The amount of shot discipline and consistency it takes to hit an X in a three spot at three to five yards is the same amount it takes to keep them in the red at 18 meters. If you can consistently, I would, I, I would say gold or at least the 10, 10 ring and in, you're doing damn good at 18 meters if you can keep that. If you can hit that X 30 times in a row without flaw, and you'll know when the shot was crap and it was, you know, you could just start with that. That will have such a, a positive impact on your indoor game before you even shoot your first game. It's crazy, but you have to, like, you have to mentally be in at every shot. And I think the difficulty there is that it's super close, so your confidence is high. But what we what we do is we we rely on, we are okay with sub par shots at eighteen meters that go in the middle. Same thing can happen at three at three meters out on a three spot. You can't be okay with a subpar shot. You have to identify. Nope, that wasn't acceptable. I'm going to make that better, and that's that's the mindset going into the next arrow. Start your season that way. Hone in on that. If your bow arm's moving all over the place because your aim isn't consistent, fix it. Don't go. Don't be okay with good groups on drive bys. That's not going to get you anywhere when in time when the time matters when it when it counts. Kurt, what's your question, buddy? Um, okay, you can hear me, yeah? Yep, you're good. So Something that I do on indoor is uh, shoot bear shaft along with the fletched arrows. Yeah. And that, that'll show up. I mean, to me, it shows up <clears throat> really serious, especially, <clears throat> you know, really quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, and if I can shoot bear shafts in the group, then I think I'm doing okay. I think there's some value there. What yeah. Do you think? Yeah, I mean when I when I set up a tune typically um I always have a bear shaft and I just set up that tune so that the bear shaft hits the same with the fletchings the fletch shafts at 18 meters that's easy to do. That's really mm -hmm. not hard. Um if you're if you're having a tr if anybody out there that listens to this uh, eventually I'll upload it. Um if you know make sure you pay attention to the basic tuning seminar that's on our and I'll make sure that I put that in the uh um episode information elton and i go through at a seminar at nationals in virginia and really get into the nitty-gritty of like well how do you move your um how do you tune your bow to reflect where you're hitting and what you're doing you know and just remember good groups right real tight groups with that bear shaft that kurt's talking about if you're keeping that that bear shaft in a tight group but that tight group's not in the middle Move the group. Don't move you. Move the group. If you're consistent and you're hitting good groups, move the group. How do you do that? Well, you don't move groups. If you have good groups, you don't move them by clicks on the plunger. You move it by moving the plunger. Just keep that in mind. Clicks on the plunger takes you out of, will take you out of tune. You only have so many clicks on the plunger that's going to, you're going to stay in tune. Um, so just keep that in mind, but yeah, that's a good point. Morton said fat arrows. Do you consider a six or seven millimeter a fat arrow? No, I would say that's the middle of the road. That's like a, a happy medium. You can, you can go to skinny arrow, definitely the most forgiving 0.166, you know, that, that ballpark 0.204, um, relatively skinny. As soon as you get into 0 0.234 to 0 0.244, or you start getting into the, the four or five six seven millimeter up to the nine i would i don't know if there's any eights i don't know what that would be maybe uh like a like a ps26 might be an eight millimeter um from black eagle um but I, I would say i would say anything you know 20 i would say 22 diameter and up is what i consider sort of a fatter shaft you know but typically everybody shoots 9.33 that's because that's the 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 biggest legal amount we're allowed to to use um elizabeth asked me do you have a poundage recommendation for indoor uh, elizabeth i'm 
I'm curious of what you're using now. Uh, I would say, no, I don't have a, uh, a recommendation. It's going to be different for everyone. I will say that um, poundage varies for men from 30, I would say on average from all the people that I've interviewed and the shooters I've worked with, on average is somewhere between 36 and 42 is the average. 38 to 42 might be the average. Um, for women, it's probably 20, I'm going to say 26 to 32 maybe a little bit higher um 28 to 32 is probably most common i would also say that like for indoor poundage is less of a huge factor but yeah 29 29 pounds on the fingers is that's that's fine that's that's not that's not if you can go up a little bit go up a little bit but you know you have to find what works best for you and you have to find like where does your release work the best where is your to bow tune the best with what arrows you have as you're increasing poundage, your tune changes. Um, you know, you have to kind of find all those hot. Where's my release the most consistent? Where am I getting into my back my best? There's so many subtle changes that you can make. But, you know, guys like John and Grayson and a few others, they really notice that difference when you go one pound up or down, two pounds up or down. Many, many shooters are haven't gotten to that level of consistency yet where they see those changes, you know, and they're like, oh, well, the higher my poundage, the cleaner my release. No, not necessarily. It just it 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 just um there's a there's a a negative return on investment there. You go too high, the target panic gets worse. Um, the more tension you hold on your fingers, doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be most consistent and the cleanest so you have to find that happy place of i can hold in the middle real easy my release is still clean my tune is good and that can vary um you know and you have to play around with arrow length tip weight um tiller brace height and really try to get everything lined up you know i think my first year of shooting um I think I found a really, really, really good tune early on. And it was definitely one of the, one of the benefit or, uh, well, it was one of the benefits of having guys like Grace and then John to, to bounce things off of. It happened to be John's old bow. Um, but having a good tune really, really does help with consistency. Um, but I also have shot good scores with great tunes and, it can be done, especially indoor, outdoor, eh, 50 meter, and eh, maybe not so much indoor. You can get away with it, but so I hope that helps. Yep. No problem. No problem. Well, it's 1129. So um, I said it was going to be 30 minutes. You guys have any other questions? If not, the open bare bow talk is going to come to a close for those of you that listen to this later on. Um, Go check out the Patreon page. There's a lot of exclusive content. There's a lot of exclusive access to guests and all kinds of stuff where you get to log in before podcasts are recorded and, and talk to guests yourself. Um, there's there's exclusive coaching opportunities for Patreon people. Um, I really try to cater to the people that support the Bearable Project through Patreon as much as I can. Um, even even this is a this is a rare opportunity where uh, I kind of opened it up to the public um, just to give you an idea of what what kind of benefit there is to it. So go check that out. Go check on the new online store. There's two clothing lines. Um, there's the Barebo Life and a uh, clothing line, and there's the We Are Barebo clothing line. Go check those out um, on the through um, the link tree in every episode and Facebook and Instagram. You can find it all there. Um, and then I am doing an advanced online barebo seminar um in november um i want to say 16th and 26 19th and 26th actually let me look that up right now just because i want to know mm, 19th and the 26th from 5 to 9 p.m each day that is the link to register for that is um in the event page on the barebo project facebook page and in the group, I believe. 
um and what you want to do if you want to take that i mean we're gonna we'll we'll go over target panic mental game um basic tuning um and all kinds of all kinds of topics i've taught this before you know it's everyone has benefited from it in some way shape or form um and it's really really a um it's a good it's a good resource for information um, plus i can cater the conversation to what your needs are so go check that out consider signing up for it um, that link is in link tree also so for the rest of you i'm gonna call it a day all right thanks for joining us barrel project out see everyone yep no problem elizabeth take care